Congratulations! It's me, Cat. <laughs> Cheesy Blaster's mascot. Sports teams are not the only ones with famous mascots. The food industry has their share of stars, too. Consumers associate a face with a brand, and that face is often a mascot given life through animation. So let's meet some of the top 10 best food mascots ever. Part 2. Ask me about my winner! Charlie the Tuna, star-kissed tuna. Tuna? Are you kidding me? Created in 1961, you probably know this mascot by his advertisement's famous catchphrase. Sorry, Charlie. He's an anthropomorphic blue tuna fish wearing glasses and a red beret that sometimes features his name. He was created by Tom Rogers as a beatnik, or in more modern terms, Charlie's a hipster. Sorry, I was taking a selfie while shooting a Snapchat, while periscoping that Snapchat, while Instagramming latte art. Like most hipsters, Charlie believes he has culture and overall good good taste and uses this to convince Starkist that he should be caught. However, as explained by the announcer, Starkist is looking for a tuna that tastes good, not one that has good taste. He's often sent a note on a line reading, Sorry, Charlie. In over 85 advertisements for the brand, he was the mascot till the 80s, and then again in 1999 when he made a comeback in order to promote a new line of healthier tuna products. If you don't recognize him from Starkist's packaging or advertising, you might recognize him from his appearance in the 2012 animated box office flop, Food Fight. Charlie has definitely seen better days. Sorry, Charlie. Buzz. Honey Nut Cheerios. Hey, I shared my Honey Nut Cheerios with you. Cheerios were first manufactured in 1941 before their sweeter successor, Honey Nut Cheerios, were introduced to the market in 1979. Their friendly bee mascot actually didn't have a name until the year 2000 when a fifth grade student from Texas won a contest to name the bee. His animation changed somewhat over the years, but Buzz is typically depicted as a yellow bee with black stripes and and blue eyes, wearing an orange tee and white sneakers. We're the only ones who make honey, pollinate flowers, and dress like this. When Cheerios pulled their lovable mascot from their boxes in 2017 in order to make a statement about the declining bee populations, fans felt the disruption. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! In his place on the cereal boxes was a white silhouette of a bee with a dashed outline. These new boxes featured the slogan, Bring Back the Bees, a campaign whose mission was to encourage people to plant wildflowers in order to help the bee population recover and do what bees do. Buzz has since returned to Honey Nut Cheerios boxes, adding his customary dollop of honey to some otherwise ordinary Cheerios. Horatio Magellan Crunch, Captain Crunch. This is your captain speaking. Of all the famous captains, America, Hook, and Sparrow, Captain Horatio Magellan Crunch is by far the captain who stands for the most delicious values. You'll find him proudly saluting on the front of brightly colored Captain Crunch cereal boxes, wearing his revolutionary-style naval captain's uniform and characteristic grin. Although the cereal was introduced in 1963, Captain Crunch himself was born on March 11, 1943, on Crunch Island in the Sea of Milk. That's not a real place. A magical place with talking trees, creatures, and a whole mountain, Mount Crunchmore, made out of mysterious Cap'n Crunch cereal. Apparently, Crunch is insanely good at chess, with a total record of 369 wins and only seven losses. I'm here to play chess. We're gonna play chess and not another word. He also has a 200 IQ. Moreover, Cap'n Crunch has his own talk show called The Cap'n Crunch Show, which was released this year. Truly a man of many talents. Horatio Magellan Crunch will always be the most respected for the treasure that were in every box of Cap'n Crunch cereal. We salute you, Cap'n. The Jolly Green Giant. Green Giant. Someone called me the, the Big Friendly Giant. Unlike the Hulk, this green giant is always sporting a giant smile. However, the jolly green giant wasn't always so jolly. In 1928, when he first emerged as the mascot of the brand, he looked very little like he does today. He was a white caveman in full color, wearing a bear skin and holding a huge pea pod, completely devoid of a smile. By 1930, he had become monochrome, you guessed it, in green. He got his first real remodeling 
in 1936, where his bearskin was swapped for foliage, his pea pod was swapped for a husk of corn, and he now wore his signature smile. Now I'm always smiling. It was also at this time that the word jolly was added to the front of his name. He was redesigned nine more times after that, with the latest upgrade in 2014, to become the tall, green, and handsome fellow he is now. He made his first TV appearance in 1958, encouraging consumers to eat their veggies, specifically the Green Giant's canned veggies. What? Is this all vegetables? What an all vegetable! He must have made a pretty big impact because this mascot has a valley named after him and a statue erected in his honor. 60 miles south of the Valley of the Jolly Green Giant in Minnesota, the 55-foot fiberglass statue of the Jolly Green Giant stands tall and proud. If you listen real close, you can hear him bellowing out his catchphrase. <laughs> Probably. Miss Chiquita, Chiquita Bananas. I'm Chiquita Banana and I'm here to say. Since 1963, Chiquita Bananas has had the first lady of fruit on their iconic blue labels. Miss Chiquita has been around for over 70 years now, and she's managed to reinvent herself. Miss Chiquita has been part of many campaigns over the years to keep banana eaters engaged with the brand. And eat a damn banana. From sponsoring the Olympics in 1980 to marathons, Miss Chiquita has managed to have a presence in many spheres. To keep up with the times, Chiquita Bananas promote fun contests such as the Fuel the Fun competition, where Miss Chiquita lovers would submit fun art designs that have a chance to be featured alongside the First Lady of Fruit herself. Chiquita Bananas also has a super fun and easy recipe page. Whether you just want a simple bowl of granola and yogurt with a chopped up Chiquita banana as the icing on the cake, so to say, or a recipe for muffins or a cake to bring to a special occasion, this mascot has got you covered. Mr. Peanut, Planters Peanuts. You look like Mr. Peanut. Yeah, I know, right? That's what I was going for. This old-fashioned gentle peanut has actually been around since 1916. A 14-year-old student won a design contest by submitting drawings of an anthropomorphic peanut. Commercial artist Andrew S. Wallach added Mr. Peanut's iconic monocle, top hat, and cane to create the lovable mascot we all know today. In fact, in 2006, Planters Peanuts gave the public the option to vote on whether a bow tie, cufflinks, or a pocket watch should be added to the mascot, but the majority actually voted for no change. You're right! Why fix something that's not broken? Folks admire Mr. Peanut just the way he is. Either way, the mascot did change appearance somewhat throughout the years, with varying shades of yellow for his body and different animation styles, including 3D and stop motion. He also acquired a voice for the first time in 2010, thanks to Robert Downey Jr., although after 2018, he no longer spoke. During the 2020 Super Bowl, Planters Peanuts released a teaser commercial in which they actually killed off their legendary mascot in a horrific, fiery death. Being the hero he was, Mr. Peanut sacrificed himself in order to save Wesley Snipes and Matt Walsh. Wow, that sounds pretty dark. Social media was heartbroken, and rightfully so. During Planter's Super Bowl ad, Mr. Peanut was given a funeral attended by Mr. Clean and the Kool-Aid Man, among others. It was during this commercial that a new, younger incarnation of Mr. Peanut was born. He was dubbed Baby Nut, and thus Mr. Peanut's legacy lives on. Cheezosaurus Rex Craft Macaroni and Cheese. What are they serving us, Tyrannosaurus Rex? Cheezosaurus Rex was an orange Tyrannosaurus Rex, very appropriately named by America's youth at the time. He had his own song when he was first introduced to audiences, which was swapped out a few years later for the tagline, When the cheese starts falling crap, get your new go away. Advertisements featured him at the beach, at sporting events, and even performing his own concerts. Although his legacy was short-lived, he was featured at the Macy's Parade from 2001 to 2003 as a Tyranno tourist balloon, flashing his camera at the crowd and telling them to say cheese. Cheezosaurus Rex is still a nostalgic mascot from the childhoods of many, a character that makes you go, oh hey, I remember that guy, and you grab that extra box of mac and cheese from the grocery shelf for old times' sake. Frito Bandito 
Fritos. I came for the Frito Bandito, and still I said nothing. If you don't remember Fritos corn chips having a mascot, that's probably because you weren't around from 1967 to 1971, when this guy was the face of Fritos. He was retired pretty early on, and you can probably imagine why. He was designed based on the American stereotype of the Mexican bandit. He robbed people of their Fritos chips at gunpoint and spoke exaggerated broken English. My name is Jeff. He's dressed in all white, wears a sombrero, sports a handlebar mustache, and carries around two pistols in a double holster. It's incredibly racist. It's super racist. <laughs> he usually appeared in commercials which aired during children's programming due to his cartoon nature and jingle sung to the tune of the traditional Mexican song Cielito Lindo, but quickly grew in popularity. Thus, he began being featured in all of Frito's print and television advertising. The character continued to face racist activities accusations, leading Frito-Lay to introduce new mascots, such as a group of cowboys named the Muncha Bunch and another character, W.C. Fritos, based off of the old-time comedian W.C. Fields. By 1970, the brand had stopped airing commercials featuring Frito Bandito and eventually retired the character for good in 1971. Chef Boyardee Chef Boyardee Canned Foods We are competing in the International Chef Boy ID Lookalike Contest. Here's one brand whose founder is also their mascot. Ettore, anglicized as Hector Boyardi, an Italian immigrant, founded his company in Milton, Pennsylvania in 1938. Chef Boyardi sells canned and microwavable pasta products such as spaghetti, beefaroni, ravioli, lasagna, pizza, and sauces. The first to be sold was a ready-to-heat spaghetti kit that included uncooked pasta, tomato sauce, and pre-grated cheese. No, it's spaghetti. Uh, so is spaghetti. In 1942, Chef Boyardee meals were produced and sent overseas to troops during World War II. The plant operated at all hours of the day, every day of the week, and had employed roughly 5,000 new workers in order to keep up with demand. After the war, Ettore Boyardee was awarded the Gold Star, one of the highest military honors a civilian can receive. Unfortunately, he was also put in a tough situation at this time. Sell the company or or lay off everyone he'd hired. You're all fired. He chose the former and sold to American Home Foods in 1946 for nearly $6 million, but remained a spokesman and consultant until 1978 when he finally retired. The Quaker Man, Quaker Oats. Oh, what are you, like a Quaker now? If you're a fan of oatmeal, you're probably familiar with the popular Quaker Man, unofficially named Larry. He's one of the oldest mascots still around and hasn't changed all that much since his first print ad launch in 1882. In fact, according to the company, the Quaker Man was the first registered trademark for breakfast cereal in America. It was speculated that he was modeled after a real Quaker, William Penn, but PepsiCo has stated that their current Quaker Man is not an actual person. He is simply an image of a man dressed in Quaker garb and was chosen because of his symbolic reference to good quality and value, honesty, purity, and strength. Although his appearance has stayed relatively the same, he was redesigned several times. His hat and general attire, white shoulder-length hair, rosy cheeks, and warm smile have stayed the same. After over 100 years of service, we think Larry's revamping was well-deserved, but we admire that he's stayed true to his roots. Stay right here and tap on another one of our great videos. Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.